Hi, my name is Agnes and I'm an electronic engineer. I'm also a former UK SF scholar. Hi, I'm Joanna Taylor, UK ESF Scholar of the Year 2016 and current Silicon Product Engineer at Graphcore. I'm Isla and I'm a Control Software Engineer at McLaren Automotive. So I've heard a lot of people share their stories about how they got into electronics and it's usually very similar. They've known it since they were a little kid. Uh, they've taken things apart and things like that, which, which is really nice for them. However, it was really discouraging when I was growing up and getting into electronics a bit later. So I'm just going to share my story and um, hope that it resonates with some of you. But I, I did not know I wanted to do electronics growing up at all. I was good at maths, I was good at science, but it just never really clicked that electronics was an option for me. No one came up to me and said, hey, you know, electronics is really cool. And I wish they did. So here I am. Unfortunately, I didn't have the chance to do subjects like electronics in school either. It just... It wasn't an option. In physics class, we had some sort of introduction. We've done a few basic principles and applied them. And that alone was enough to get me really interested. So I did the only reasonable thing you can do with zero experience is apply to university, to an electronic engineering course. And it worked out great. Uh, sure, I had loads to catch up on in the first year, but I've got the full support of staff and um, eventually I graduated with the first in 2020. So how did I get to where I am? I started off with A-levels of maths, further maths, physics and an AS in psychology. Initially, I didn't actually want to go into engineering as both of my parents have backgrounds in electrical engineering, so I looked at maths and physics degrees. But while I was at university open days, I realised I much preferred the units in electrical and electronic engineering degrees. At school, I was really interested in new technology and I heard about electronics through school careers fairs. I did an electronics GCSE and I really enjoyed this because I was able to design and develop a real product. I made an electronics game to teach a child Spanish. In the end, the product was quite simplistic, but it was really fun to develop. And from this, I learned that engineering and electronics could be really creative. I went on to do maths, physics, further maths and geography at A-level and then I studied electrical and electronics engineering at the University of Glasgow, which is a five-year master's. I went to a few open days and listened to different talks about the different types of engineering courses, but I found that electronics sounded like the most interesting to me. So this was the electronic engineering MEng at the University of Nottingham. This is a very practical, heavy, um, hands-on course with loads of project work. Um, quite literally from day one, on day one, we were in labs and working on a little electronic car. That was great. It was really hard work but it was also loads of fun, uh, just working in teams, working together, learning new stuff and applying in practice what we learned in the lectures beforehand that really had put into perspective why we are learning those things. So I ended up choosing to study a master's degree in electrical and electronic engineering at Bristol University. I chose Bristol as it was a top university and I realised I had to pick somewhere that I would have to live for at least four years. I liked the city so much that I stayed here after graduation. University was hard work but fun. One project I will likely never forget was the buggy project. This is where we had to program a buggy to navigate a checkerboard maze and connect to various black boxes and figure out the circuits inside. It was hard work but it really brought us together as a group and showed real application of what we had been studying in various courses. It involved programming, control theory and circuit theory amongst other skills. The courses were pretty similar across different universities. All of them had a general first year and the opportunity to study abroad. But what I really liked about Glasgow University is that it was a campus university in a city. So the university itself felt quite cohesive, but you still had the whole city to explore. I also loved being near the Highlands, going skiing in Glencoe and hiking in the summer. 
I loved university. I loved studying with students from all around the world and I found that Glasgow was such a friendly city. I never really ended up specialising at university because I enjoyed such a broad range of courses, from studying semiconductor materials at, right down at the electron level to circuit design and also robotics. I worked on some really exciting projects. In third year, we designed and built a autonomous maze solving robot. In this project, we developed a special feature where we attached electrodes to our forearms and used the muscle signals to move the robot backwards and forwards. We also tried with brain waves, but they were really hard to detect. Then in fourth year, I was part of a team that designed and built a, a search and rescue drone for Police Scotland. And then in fifth year, we built a life-size replica of BB-8 from Star Wars, which could be controlled using an app on your phone and had a levitating head. With the UK ESF scholarship scheme, I spent three summers working for Imagination Technologies in their Power VR hardware department. This was spread across both the King's Langley and Bristol offices. Having this real world experience really helped with my studies as I started to see how some of the subjects could be used in the real working world. I spent the bulk of my time in verification and learned a lot about how the silicon chips are designed and verified in RTL. During summer breaks, I've done various internships. In my, after my first and second years, I worked with a company called CSD, testing their simulation software. And I was in my third year when I got the UKSF scholarship, which was sponsored by Vivamos, which was a small startup at the time. It is now part of Nodes and X-Ray. They make image detectors, kind of like the camera in your phone, uh, except this is used for um, mainly for X-Ray, looking into things without destroying them, kind of like think of uh, airport security, baggage check and that sort of thing. So there at Norden, I spent the summer working and developing a test process for a circuit board that the main product uses. And this was my own project from start to finish. And it, it really went from start to finish in a few weeks. And that allowed me to see how um, just from a list of requirements, you can get to an actual product that is being used at manufacturing. And I thought that was pretty cool. With the UK ESF scholarship, I had a placement at ARM in Cambridge, developing firmware for some of their chips. ARM developed CPUs and GPUs for low power devices for companies like Apple and Samsung. I learned a lot about how industry works and developed my programming skills a lot. But ultimately, I felt like C and C++ programming wasn't really for me, and I liked working on like bigger physical projects. For my master's, I decided to go to Singapore and developed a low-cost ultrasound imaging device for scanning materials for hidden cracks. I enjoyed a mix of the hardware development and the software for this project, and it was also a great opportunity to travel. Since graduating back in 2017, I have been working for Graphcore in the Project Test and Diagnostics team. Graphcore creates a new type of processing unit we call the IPU, Intelligence Processing Unit. Much in the same way a GPU was designed to be optimised for graphics, the IPU is optimised specifically for AI applications. Working for Graphcore has been a great opportunity for me as I have been here since we were a small company of roughly 70 people all the way up to where we are now with more than 400 employees across multiple offices globally. I've learned a lot in such a short period of time and I had opportunities to do different things I just wouldn't have had at a larger company. So in my team, we work on testing the physical product. This is from the chip level all the way to the finished product, the M2000, which is a full chassis made of four IPUs and sits in a rack in a data center. I have been fortunate enough to have done all sorts of things in my role, such as designing the test systems, writing test programs, and even done some PCB design for our circuit board. Currently, I am the technical lead for our HTOL, High Temperature Operating Lifetime Reliability System, which means that I am responsible for making sure that we have a fully working system that can be used to run HTOL for many thousands of hours. I hope hearing my experience will help you to decide what choices to make for your future career. I applied for a lot of graduate schemes in my final year, but I became interested in McLaren after I heard an interview with Caroline Hargrove, who developed the McLaren F1 simulator. 
I looked at their graduate scheme and saw one in automotive where graduates would get to move around different departments before picking the department they would like to work in. This sounded great to me as I wanted to try something a bit different and I really wasn't sure what I wanted to do after university. I joined McLaren Automotive as a graduate in 2019, which was the same year that I graduated. McLaren is three companies in one. There's racing, which looks after Formula One and Formula E, automotive, where they develop the supercars, and applied, which is more research and development. I was a graduate in automotive, and my first rotation was as a transmission control software engineer. I worked mainly on the speed tail, which is the fastest McLaren ever built. It has a top speed of 250 miles an hour, and they had to carry out tests on a NASA runway because there are no roads long enough to test the max speed. During this time, I was developing and testing the software for the gearbox, and from day one, I knew that this was the role where I wanted to end up. I'm now a control software engineer for the body electronics team. This means I look after a broad range of features, from ADAS, which is adaptive cruise control, to the anti-theft alarm, to accessing the vehicle. At the moment, I'm working on Artura, which is a hybrid supercar. It's a completely new architecture and platform, which means all the challenges are new for the whole team, and it's a really exciting project to work on. My day is really varied. My role consists of developing the software, testing it on the vehicle, going to the test track to carry out tests and analyzing data logs from the tests to understand any bugs in the software. This has been a short overview of my journey into the career I have now. One thing I have learned is that there's such a range of opportunities in electronics and although everyone has a different path, you will end up doing something that you love. Thanks for watching. I am now a graduate electronics engineer and in this role, I'm on a two-year rotation, just moving around the company, working on a bunch of different projects, just generally getting an idea of what um, anything an electronic engineer may end up doing. But by the time the second year is up, I should have a better idea about where I may want to work afterwards, or in what area, what specialisation, things like that. And I guess that is all, so thank you very much.